Welcome to Liftoff, your first place where you find everything space and everything SpaceX. Voyager 2 has been around for quite a while. This is an explorer who has no pilot to go into the vastness of space, collecting data about our universe. The space probe was launched on 20th August 1977 from Cape Canaveral, Florida. And to this day, it's still sending data back to Earth. Join us today as we discover what did the robotic spacecraft Voyager 2 find out in deep space. Stay tuned. The Voyager spacecraft has been on its mission for more than 44 years now. Its primary mission was to visit the Jovian system and the Saturnian system, which means to explore the planets of Jupiter and Saturn. Interestingly, there was an additional option for the trajectory of Voyager 2, which could be exercised to explore Uranus and Neptune as well. This option was ultimately exercised. As a fact about the Voyager spacecraft, Voyager 1's trajectory was set a path faster than that of Voyager 2, due to which Voyager 2 would arrive at Jupiter four months after the arrival of Voyager 1. Voyager 2 is still cruising in space today. As time passes, it flies far away from Earth. It is currently about 11.6 billion miles or 18.66 billion kilometers from our home planet in the depths of interstellar space. Because of that distance, maintaining contact with Voyager 2 is an enormous effort. Even though radio waves travel at the speed of light, the signal from Voyager 2 will take longer to reach Earth and vice versa. This makes it very difficult to send and receive signals from space probes. But now, Voyager 2 is back online. In 2020, NASA has successfully approached Voyager 2 after completing an upgrade to an antenna in the Deep Space Network. The DSN consists of huge antennas spread around the world. The network has antennas in Madrid, Spain, Goldstone, California, and Canberra, Australia. Antennas are positioned so that any spacecraft within line of sight can transmit and receive signals at any time. Despite the DSN's wide reach, keeping in touch with Voyager 2 remains a challenge. During a flyby in 1989, along with Triton, one of Neptune's moons, the space probe was deflected to the south and has been moving in that direction, so now in the line of sight with Goldstone and Madrid antennas. The Canberra antenna, called Deep Space Station 43, or DSS-43, is the only one that can communicate with Voyager 2. DSS-43 was the antenna that went through major repairs and upgrades. As such, it could send commands to Voyager 2 more effectively. Also, the DSS-43's transmitters haven't been replaced in 47 years, so they are really long overdue for upgrades. While the antenna was being repaired, Voyager 2 was still sending scientific data back to Earth. NASA was able to receive them, but without DSS-43. They could not send instructions to Voyager 2, but now with an upgraded DSS-43, Earth can be in contact with Voyager 2 once again. But because of the vast distances between the space probe and Earth, it takes 17 hours for messages to be relayed. So, if Earth gives the directions to Voyager 2, it'll take 17 hours for the signal to reach the space probe. Then it will take 17 hours for Voyager 2 to transmit a reply back to Earth. That's 34 hours round trip for a radio signal, which is about a day and a half. The 44-year-old space probe is currently in an area called interstellar space. Roughly, this means that it is between the Sun and other stars in our galaxy. More specifically, the space probe has moved beyond the heliosphere, which is the bubble of plasma produced by solar winds. The heliosphere protects the solar system from radiation and other stars in interstellar space. There are many cosmic rays scattered by the explosion of stars, which generate tremendous amounts of radiation. The heliosphere blocks those rays from entering our solar system. The heliosphere extends slightly beyond the solar system. So in short, Voyager 2 has already exited our solar system and is entering the unknown. What's in interstellar space? It may sound empty, but it is far from nothing. Most of the interstellar space is made up of hydrogen and helium, two of the most abundant elements in the universe. Along with these are clouds of gas and dust composed of different elements. 
The particles are thinly dispersed, although interstellar space is much less dense than Earth's atmosphere. The particles are thinly dispersed, although interstellar space is much less dense than Earth's atmosphere. The approximate density is one atom per cubic centimeter. It's not much, which is why interstellar space appears empty. Voyager 2 is an old piece of equipment, but it has made history a few times. Here are some of its grand achievements. While Voyager 2 was encountering Jupiter, it discovered the satellites of Metis and Adrastia orbiting the planet just outside the rings. The Voyager 2 also discovered Thebe, a new satellite also known by the name of Jupiter XIV, present between the orbits of Io and Amalfia. When Voyager 2 approached Uranus, it discovered the planet's 11 moons. When Voyager 2 reached Neptune, it again discovered some Neptunian rings, which were previously also unknown. The space probe also discovered six new moons of Neptune. Voyager 2 is also credited for the discovery of the Great Dark Spot, which has never been seen again. The spacecraft got the closest to Saturn on August 26, 1981. Voyager 2 draws power from something called a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, or RTG. It is a bit like a nuclear power plant, but much smaller, and an RTG uses heat from radioactive decay to generate electricity, much like how a nuclear reactor uses heat from nuclear fission to produce electricity. The RTG powers 11 scientific instruments and radio transceivers, the radioactive material in an RTG decays over time, so it will not provide power forever. Each year, Voyager 2's power output drops by 4 watts, and over the years, NASA engineers have had to turn off the instruments one by one to save energy. Currently, only 5 of the 11 scientific instruments on board are active. Most of them are instruments that measure energy. The cameras have also been turned off. Though, it would have been nice to see what interstellar space looked like. NASA engineers will also have to weigh options in interstellar space. There's almost nothing to see nearby, so it's best to have a camera offline. That way, Voyager 2 can squeeze more power out of its RTGs for instruments that are more useful in that area of space. And that concludes today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a like. And let us know your thoughts about Voyager 2 in the comment section down below. Subscribe to Liftoff and turn on the notification feature to see more interesting updates about space and SpaceX. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time.